For the first time ever, scientists working at the Large Hadron Collider have detected neutrinos created in a particle collider. Neutrinos are subatomic particles that are similar to electrons, but they have no electric charge and very little mass. They are one of the most abundant particles in the universe, and they are produced in a variety of ways, including during nuclear reactions, in the cores of stars, and during certain types of radioactive decay. One of the most interesting properties of neutrinos is that they interact very weakly with matter, which makes them difficult to detect. They can pass through most materials without being stopped or deflected, and they can even pass through the Earth without being significantly affected. Neutrinos come in three types, electron neutrinos, muon neutrinos, and tau neutrinos. They can transform from one to another as they travel through space, a phenomenon known as neutrino oscillation. This property has important implications for the study of neutrinos and for our understanding of the universe. CERN researchers have just said that this recent discovery represents the first direct observation of collider neutrinos, saying that it will help them better understand their role in the universe. Particle physicist Jonathan Feng of the University of California, Irvine, said the following. We've discovered neutrinos from a brand new source, where you have two beams of particles smashed together at extremely high energy. End quote. Particle physicist Jamie Boyd of CERN said the following. They can tell us about deep space in ways we can't learn otherwise. These very high-energy neutrinos in the LHC are important for understanding really exciting observations in particle astrophysics. End quote. For those unaware, the Large Hadron Collider is the world's largest and most powerful particle accelerator, located at the European Organization for Nuclear Research in Switzerland. It consists of a 27-kilometer long circular tunnel containing powerful magnets and accelerating structures that propel and guide particles to very high speeds, near the speed of light. The Large Hadron Collider is designed to collide beams of subatomic particles, mainly protons, with each other at very high energies. These collisions create new particles that physicists study in order to better understand the fundamental nature of matter and the universe. The Large Hadron Collider was first switched on in 2008 and has since been used to make many important discoveries, including the confirmation of the Higgs boson, a particle that gives mass to other particles. It has also been used to study the properties of other particles, such as quarks and gluons, and to investigate phenomena such as dark matter and supersymmetry. The Large Hadron Collider is an important tool for particle physics research and has been instrumental in advancing our understanding of the fundamental nature of the universe. The Large Hadron Collider was used to discover the Higgs particle in 2012. The Higgs boson is a fundamental particle that was first proposed by Peter Higgs and others in the 1960s as a mechanism to explain why some particles have mass while others do not. The Large Hadron Collider detected the Higgs boson by colliding protons together at very high energies, which produced a variety of other particles. Some of these particles decayed into pairs of other particles, which could be detected by the Large Hadron Collider's detectors. By analyzing the patterns of these decays, physicists were able to identify the presence of the Higgs boson. The discovery of the Higgs boson was a major breakthrough in particle physics because it confirmed the existence of the Higgs field which is responsible for giving mass to other particles. The discovery also filled a major gap in the standard model of particle physics, which is the most widely accepted theory of particle physics. Since its discovery, scientists have been using the Large Hadron Collider to study the properties of the Higgs boson, including its interactions with other particles. Missing black hole with 10 billion solar masses. When it comes to space, there is one thing that we have all heard about. Black holes. Books, movies and TV love to feature this celestial phenomenon. Though our grasp of understanding is rather tenuous, it seems that a black hole exists at the very centre of each galaxy, drawing anything and everything into it with its unparalleled gravitational pull. As such, it seems that keeping track of black holes would be the easy part. If they are so huge, monumental and powerful, how could one go missing? Even so, that is exactly what happened with this black hole. About a decade ago, Dr. Mark Postman, a member of the Space Telescope Science Institute, was surveying surrounding galaxies with the famous Hubble Space Telescope. 
While surveying, Dr. Postman found a supergiant galaxy now referred to as A2261 BCG, with no black hole at the center. Indeed, the finding was exceedingly strange. An expert of galactic nuclei at the National Optical Infrared Astronomy Research Laboratory in Tucson, Arizona, Todd Lauer, added that the absence of the black hole was really unusual. According to everything we know about black holes, this supergiant galaxy must have one at its center. This black hole is expected to house 10 billion solar masses, while the black hole at the center of our own galaxy, the Milky Way, has only 4 billion. It seems impossible and unfathomable that a black hole of this size has simply evaded notice or attention. So what exactly is happening? Using the ideas postulated by three astronomers, Mitchell Begelman, Martin Rees, and Robert Blandford, one theory says that A2261 BCG originally had two black holes that eventually combined and turned into nothing. Of course, if the burst was unequal on both sides, the impact could have sent one of the black holes flying through the galaxy. However, after analyzing and surveying A2261 BCG even further, scientists found something interesting. The diffuse core of the galaxy seems to house four little knots of light, causing some to think that the black hole's gravitational pull is keeping them there. Sarah Burke Spallor of West Virginia University led a surveying team with the hopes of untangling what the four knots could be. They found that two of them were most likely two smaller galaxies existing inside the main galaxy. Hubble was unable to provide enough details on the other two knots to reach a sound conclusion. Luckily, Hubble's successor, the James Webb Space Telescope, was launched in late 2021. Astronomers are hopeful that a telescope of this power and magnitude will be able to describe the four knots in detail and tell us the location of the missing black hole. Despite how improbable it seems that a black hole housing 10 billion solar masses could evade detection for so long, it just goes to show that outer space holds more mysteries than we ever thought. The Sun is reawakening with Cannibal CME The Sun is waking up and coming back stronger than scientists predicted. In late 2021, the Earth was hit with a sizable geomagnetic storm because of the increased number of sunspots on the surface of the Sun. Sunspots are areas of intense magnetic activity, or a magnetic storm, on the surface of the Sun that becomes more prevalent every 11 years. The Sun's activity ebbs and flows throughout those 11 years, starting from the solar minimum part of the cycle to the solar maximum which will be occurring around 2025. So as we approach 2025, solar activity will increase, creating everything from increased auroras to satellite destruction. The most recent sun activity has been a series of CMEs or coronal mass ejections. Basically, CMEs are bubbles of solar material that the sun expels. They are made up of plasma gas with magnetic fields that create issues when they interact with the Earth's magnetic field. Bill Murta, a program coordinator at the Space Weather Prediction Center of the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, described this phenomenon by saying, the two magnets are going to come together, and that's going to create this geomagnetic storm. When a CME is expelled, it moves through space, carving a pathway for later CMEs. Once another CME is expelled, it may move more quickly, overtake its predecessor, and combine with it. This combination creates CMEs that are larger and larger. This occurrence is called a cannibal CME. These types of geomagnetic space weather storms are interesting to scientists, but they also pose a real-life threat to us. More scientific events like these can impact and interfere with vital pieces of infrastructure like radio communications, power grids, and satellites. So far, nothing has happened on a large enough scale. But if a larger cannibal CME was to occur, the impact might be more serious. The best example of this would be the 12-hour blackout in Quebec, Canada in 1989 after a large solar storm. Unfortunately, it can be difficult to predict space weather. Bill Murta said, We've got some skill in forecasting the solar cycle, but we're not great at it just yet. There are lots of unknowns in the space weather business. 
Jupiter's Auroras Jupiter is the largest planet in our solar system, fifth from the Sun and one of four other planets in our solar system to have auroras similar to Earth. The auroras are displays of light caused by the Sun's energy and how it then interacts with the planet's magnetic field. This results in a glow at the magnetic poles. On Earth, this is most famously the Northern Lights. Jupiter's auroras, however, are a little different if recent findings are to be believed. Spacecraft Juno, sent to Jupiter to provide updates and new information on the gas giant, has recorded information on electrons that were sent into Jupiter's atmosphere at a staggering 400,000 volts. Some people believe that this excessive electron activity and therefore the incredibly high voltage is what gives Jupiter's auroras their much more vivid, distinctive glows. Though others say that the rare occasions that the electronic activity is this high is not enough to ensure these prolonged glows of the auroras. Juno was able to tell astronomers that the high voltages are caused by the rapid rotation of the planet. The speedy rotations means that the planet replicates the effect of an electric generator on a much larger scale. This allows the electrons to fire these high voltages, resulting in the stunning red, green and blue glows that come from the planet's poles. The interaction between the Sun's rays, electrons and Jupiter's atmosphere is something that we have never been able to observe prior to sending Juno off out into the solar system. Another key discovery that Juno alerted us to is that Jupiter's auroras seem to be formed from particles coming not only from its poles, but from Io one of Jupiter's 79 known moons. The particles are pushed into Jupiter's magnetic field by Io, come from the volcanoes which emit large quantities of sulfur and oxygen. Whilst it is true that NASA has successfully sent many spacecrafts up into orbit before, Juno is a little different. Juno is the first ever spacecraft that has flown directly above both of Jupiter's poles. The route, journey and information of Juno is entirely unique, travelling in an oval, elliptical orbit around Jupiter's north and south pole. This means the findings Juno is sending back to us about these particles is brand new. Juno is estimated to pass close by to the poles every 53 days, meaning it is travelling at 30 miles each second. This means Juno has mere seconds to capture all these measurements and it does so using the Juno Energetic Particle Detector Instrument, also known as JEDI. Barry Mork, scientist at the John Hopkins University Applied Physics Laboratory, was the leading researcher behind the JEDI technology, who explained what a feat this technology was, stating, We're very proud of the fact that we were able to pull that off. The confusion begins to arise when Juno did not send back consistent results. Astronomers anticipated consistent high voltages, though Juno has showed that this surge in electron activity is not always present. The firing of electrons appears to be random, with no rhyme or reason behind the different energies and bright auroras. Jupiter's auroras have been named a mystery for this very reason. Jonathan Nichols, a professor from the University of Leicester, in the Department of Physics and Astronomy, explains that the uncertainty here is something Juno will aim to clear up in the future. But for now, he is not quite sure how you drive auroras so bright with that particular mechanism. For now, Juno will continue to pass by the poles, and hopefully, as more data is gathered, we will be able to make more sense of the information at hand. If we can figure out exactly what is happening to Jupiter, we hope to be able to apply this to many of the processes to other celestial bodies, such as white dwarfs, exoplanets and pulsars. At the moment, however, Jupiter's auroras and their fluctuating voltages remain unsolved. But what do you make of these recent discoveries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.